first day, Florin uh, from 123 Contact Forum uh, is going to explain us a little bit about how they went from incubated status into a fully running company and maybe some details about how to run stuff with all sorts of resources. Mm. Okay, okay, I'm going to share with you a few details about uh, our past experience and how we evolved. Yeah. Okay. So, um, first of all, I want to tell you what we do. We have an online service where people log in and uh, build uh, web forms. Uh, and by that I mean contact forms and lead generation forms for their websites, uh, registration forms and feedback forms for their events, uh, surveys to ask their customers or clients about what they think, uh, and even sell stuff through order forms, through PayPal and uh, Google Checkout. Okay. Uh, besides that, our forms uh, follow a nice philosophy, build them as easy as one, two, three, and we integrate with a lot of third-party services like Aweber, MailChimp, Salesforce, Google, uh, Google Docs, a lot of them. So if people are familiar with things like uh, Google Documents for mm -hmm. Designer or Wolf Forms or how it's exactly. called, mm -hmm. they can easily go there and... They, they yeah. got a drag and drop uh, interface where they just uh, specify what type of fields they want on their forms, they drag an address field mm -hmm. and they just get the final code. They adjust it, they have themes, colors, everything is done online and uh, the business model is premium. They've got a free account with a limited number of forms but they get access to basically a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the moment they want advanced features like payment integration for instance, they have to, to subscribe. Basically, can it be functional also as a shopping cart, software engine? Um, yes, if you, if you uh, want to, to think about the order form, yes, it's a similar to, it's similar to a, a simple shopping cart. If you, it, it's perfect if you have a limited number of products mm -hmm. and uh, you might add coupons or the, the basic... Yeah, because it's obviously going to complicate with the stock management and all the stuff, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And uh, we started this service, uh, me and my partner Tudor, we started this service back in 2008 while we were working for uh, big multinational companies here in Timisoara, like, uh, I don't know if you heard about Alcatel or uh, a yeah. uh, subcontractor for IBM. Mm -hmm. And uh, this funny little project grew, and it grew a lot, 100% uh, grew rate per year, and uh, in uh, 2000 and, uh, nine, I think, or ten, uh, we met with Radu Tichu from Timisoara Business Incubator mm -hmm. and uh, we went to a lot of events with him and we uh, discovered this entrepreneurial uh, world. We had nothing, we, we knew nothing about it because we were working from home yeah. and um, since that we, we met a business angel who joined forces with us and um, the service grew right now, I think we are nine people involved. Mm. And, uh, we are doing well, the local, so you have uh, yes, some everyone services. is from uh, from Romania. Everyone mm. is from Romania, but uh, the majority of our clients are from US, and we do our best to to keep the, the US business hours. As so your main target is US market. At the moment, yes, at the moment. Mm. But um, to be honest, the future plans include um, a strong approach to multi-language forms, and especially the the European countries. At the moment, we are searching for uh, partners who want to get involved and uh, be our local presence mm -hmm. in a specific country. So they get exclusivity for that country and they get a share of revenue, quite a big one, I have to say, and they must get involved in marketing and in mm -hmm. uh, selling the product there. What's the next language you're going to, I mean, language nation you're going to mm -hmm. take care of? Um, it actually depends on the, the speed of uh, partnering finding process. At uh, the moment, we are on the final steps of reaching an agreement with a partner from Holland. And this is the, mm. the next uh, stage. Of course, we would prefer to, to go to uh, Spanish-speaking countries yeah. because it's, it's a big market. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's a it's very big one. market and we are still looking for uh, the, the right partner in that area. You didn't try to sell it here in Romania? Uh, oh, yes, we did, uh, through an English website mm -hmm. and I think we've got like three clients from Romania. Mm -hmm. the, the Romanian market is not that ready for this type of service. It's 
I don't know, they are not used to pay a subscription for... Oh. <laughs> Actually, they are not used to pay at all, but <laughs> that's another discussion. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the people point of view, what's the majority of it? developers? How how your team look like? Um, so if you're referring to my team, then we've got three people on development. I'm the CEO. Uh, we've got um, three people on support and community, we've got a marketing assistant and we've got a business angel, I counted them, mm -hmm. I've, count, I've counted him too. Business angel, so more local or came from outside somewhere? No, it's a local uh, person. It's, it? Yes, it's, a, it's a, uh, someone from Oradia and uh, he has a, a long history in developing products. Uh, actually, it's quite a funny story because uh, I knew him for 10 years, we were uh, mm. in, from the same city and uh, we never thought of each other as partners, we were just acquaintances. It's really nice. Well, also, it's going to be a pretty big surprise also for local entrepreneurs because if you look at uh, back when the workers, everybody called themselves investors and whatever, but in reality, nothing is happening. <laughs> yes, I actually reached a similar conclusion. I went to a lot of conferences and discussed with a lot of investors, and I actually decided that the best course of action would be to keep developing the product and make it big and uh, increase the revenue yeah. instead of chasing money and uh, bigger responsibilities and uh, another pair of eyes over my shoulder or even multiple pair of eyes. Mostly, yes. Yes, and I would lose the rest of my hair, and which is not that much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever occur to you to go for some incubators outside, for some startup boosters or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, if I were younger, maybe, but right now I've got a wife, I've got the children. Uh, so we, we all have in this family factor and say, fuck no, and stay home. Yes, uh, my wife would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, I guess it's the com common picture right now. Yes. And so you're saying right now, he basically from the beginning, right? When you started to incubate in this. Idea into actual um, project? No, actually, we came to rather to use. Oh, so you already had some, something? Yes, we had something. Yeah. We were generating revenue. We were actually working from home. And uh, after we met him a few years ago, we decided that in order to, to have uh, some employees, some collaborators, we have to, to be in, in an office. How complicated it was for you to, to find employees, to find developers, mm -hmm. to do your stuff? Um, quite complicated, but I have to say we were extremely lucky. So we've got the right people for what they are doing and it's an extremely cool team. We are always laughing and uh, most of them that they, of course, they do their job. Um, a very important factor for us when we hired was team synergy and uh, the way we spoke with them and how they reacted, yeah. if they understood the joke or not. That was very important because for me, the, the office... You planning to remain here in Timisoara or you have any thoughts to, to go somewhere, maybe Bucharest, maybe outside of the country? No, or I won't travel to Bucharest. I won't go to Bucharest with the company. It's no point because everything is going fine here. Yeah. And uh, to another country only for uh, local presence. So you don't have this sick rush, oh, let's go to the freaking capital, we're going to do no, something. No, no, no. Actually, you're not the capital of Romania, Timisoara, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah, that Timisha really difference. It's my first, second visit here, and I see that difference. I think the the, the location is not that important because we are all in, on the web. So yeah, but, really but somehow getting people uh, with right skills, not saying just smart heads or something, mm -hmm. but with right skills to do your particular job, is much mm -hmm. easier to get them from Timisha, from Yash, from Cluj. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's it. Um, okay. It depends. If you're meaning like the right person for marketing or stuff like that, right? Marketing, you're gonna find someone in Bucharest, then, but the te technical guy. You know, Timisoara has uh, Polytechnica, which is, I think, the third uh, university in, in Romania, and it has a lot of people. There are a lot of guys here that uh, are studying by themselves. You know, you, they don't have to, to graduate. Uh, Powerful university. Maybe we have too much clubs on the book. Don't worry, in Timisara there are plenty also. Yeah. So. 
I know something is really different, and uh, running my own company, I see the difference. It's really complicated to get someone with the right stuff. Yes, I I agree. The the people are the most important asset. As a matter of fact, is what they always say. They all say that because without the right people, because yeah, team... we we had a discussion about it with Patrick Bostos this morning. Mm -hmm. That uh, initially, uh, is with our company when it's still small, first we're thinking about taxes, optimization, mm -hmm. volume finances, properly. And after when company actually rolling, you're thinking taxes basically don't, you know, that's not the reason to take care of the human resources are, because mm -hmm. you need to write people to do the job right. Um, I think actually taxes are quite an important aspect in running a company, because um, it's not the same if you pay 50% to the state, okay? Yeah, on the developers here, when we're paying 46% to state, it's kind of really nuts. This is not something to discuss in front of a camera, <laughs> but uh, um, there are ways to do it legally. It's called, I think, uh, tax optimization. So you can do it and pay everything uh, to the state. Or to go move your company on a boundary, for example. Yes. They this did, is exactly uh, a year ago there was a thousand companies moved from the Bucharest to yes. Russia. This is exactly what uh, what I meant. So there are locations where you can keep the company or some type of uh, uh, juridic organization, some type of uh, local, I mean, one person company, and you can collaborate with that. And uh, so there are plenty yeah. of ways. But I do agree it's quite important because it's not the same if you pay a lot to the state or not. Yeah, that's true. Because it's uh, the difference could mean another person for marketing who can spread the word. For instance, this is how I see it. Yeah. So, what's your plans for for nearest future? Um, as I said, the the multi language approach is our uh, bet for the future yeah. in terms of development. I think uh, if we manage to, to find the right um, partners in key countries, then we will have a, a very big advantage in front of our competition, because everybody focuses to US. And will you go just for selecting a partner in some other country without actually doing your own research for that country? Um, it's a bit of luck based, to be honest, because uh, you can't just find the right person <laughs> by typing on Google, uh, yeah. best partner in the uh, UK, so, or I mean Ukraine. But uh, it goes like that. We found one, maybe they know someone, uh, we spoke with a few who didn't like our approach, so it's a trial and error. Do you face any issues with, uh, only talking especially with business angels or someone mm. in general outside, when you tell them that you're ruining an invasive company? No, because to be honest, I, I don't care that much about that. Um, and uh, the relation with our business angel is extraordinary because, yeah. as I said, we are on the same age. Oh, yeah, this one is local, this one is ours, yeah, but it's easier. in a sense, when uh, you've seen many companies recently, many, I mean, the ones that survived last two years, mm -hmm. moved to UK, for example, because when you put in like, hey, I'm a startup, everybody would be so far on UK. Okay, okay uh, that could be an issue, but uh, we didn't encounter it too far, uh, I mean, until now. And um, I think it won't be an issue for us because, uh, as I said, those local partners have the local presence. Yeah. Okay, so they could uh, be a distribution channel for us and we won't care that much about being uh, with an office in US or in UK. Well, I think from a national point of view, US is much easier because the multicultural thing with their mm -hmm. influence is really bad. You know. It's much easier to say there that you're Romanian than you're going to UK or I don't know Germany, for example, mm -hmm. France, man, mm -hmm. where you're saying like, "Hey, I'm a Romanian company. You know, <laughs> let's do some business together." I, I guess that's out of the question. Yeah. But uh, being on the web only, it's quite easy because uh, you just rely on people visiting the website and selling to them directly. So I won't go and propose to the national. I don't know, health uh, minister in France to, to buy a license from me. Yeah. I, I don't have to do that. Maybe someone from France will visit on my website and they build a form for their, I don't know, 360 survey feedback form. Well, networking, uh, how did it help you a lot or not at all I mean, to do the networking when you come and visit different events like Mobile Monday or others? Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, I have to say networking uh, helped from the beginning because this is how we met. Um, you know, it was a chain of events. So we first met Radu Tichu, then we met Bogdan Yordake from How to Web, then we went to How to Web, then we met uh, our business angel there, and actually, without meeting the first person in the chain, we wouldn't have been. Because uh, normally we have like two groups of people. Once uh, meetup fanatics, they're gonna mm -hmm. go for any freaking event they can find, or for food, or for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And others we have uh, meetup haters that say, fuck, I'm gonna go there, waste my time, and I can do one, or I can code, or I can do something else. Um, well, I guess I'm closer to the second category because I've been to a lot of events in the past six months. I've been to Le Web in Paris, uh, two editions of, of How to Web, uh, Business Days, uh, a lot of events anyway. And uh, to be honest, except the business, business angel thing, Nothing really came to, to a business partnership that would have been uh, truly good for me. So there were talks, everybody was excited. Yes, we'll do that, we'll do that, let's exchange business cards, let's talk after. Okay, nothing came out of it. So actually my, my honest conclusion is that uh, there is a, a, how should I put it, there is a period in the life of a company when uh, it's okay to go to events. Actually there are two. In the beginning, when you've got an idea and you need to know people to, to see how they are, how you should do it, okay? Then it comes the stage where you really have to focus on the product, and I am in that stage with our company. And then it comes another uh, time period when you have to, to sell the company or to find a bigger investor and... Uh, I mean, you know what I mean, yeah. an investor, okay? And the beginning and the end are the right moments when you really should go to all events and meet uh, with everybody. But the moment where I'm in, it's kind of useless to, to go well, to Well, you see, I don't know if, if you spotted it. Uh, recent events where I've been here in Bucharest especially, uh, major, majority of people who's running there is the little teenagers who's thinking that they have a startup. Because mm -hmm. whatever they come in their mind, they immediately call a startup and they run in with this stuff. Which is more or less okay, but they have no idea about running a business actually. That's they true. come into these events, uh, they meet the other founders, they do this founder dating, changing cards, but first of all they don't do any networking with business person who's coming. Because they are coming people who is investing, who is knowing who is investing and stuff like that, but in reality nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. So, after all, at some point it's still a waste of time because they didn't do their job right, nobody educated them. I think um, you should put it that not all of them are doing what they are supposed to be doing after that. But maybe one or two get inspired and they really start that project. And for those two persons, it's okay. I, my belief is that it's okay. You mean it's, it's okay to invite 300 people at some event where only two people actually yes. execute with the Why not? idea with the I, I, I will tell you, I mean, I told you my story where we went to that event and we met with uh, the business angel. I'm not sure how many really did something at that event, but we did it. Mm -hmm. And for us it was a life-changing life event. And my whole life during the past two years was based because of that, on, was based on that particular mm -hmm. moment and on that event, which maybe didn't help everyone. So after all, in conclusion, networking is the valuable part of the business life that you still have to consider, not just Yes, depend on your, your position during the business development. And when it comes to finances, you, you going for just angel amount of numbers, so you're thinking of going somewhere further? Um, our deal with the business change was uh, quite complex because we didn't actually need only the money, we required his experience and actually that was the... Sort of mentoring. Yes, and his, um, he, he had a great amount of experience in custom development mm -hmm. and uh, business development and uh, we needed that because we felt we can't evolve anymore by our own. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the future, I don't have any immediate plans to go and run for VC money. Mm -hmm. I really want to, to make this business bigger and to, to get more revenue, more clients and probably the money will come by themselves or not. So here we come with my typical question, you, you, you want to keep it as a startup or you want to keep it as a ground business, something big? 
keeps um, you alive, stable, gives money daily, monthly. Then we are already past beyond the startup stage because it has revenue so and it, profit. It, and you want to have it and keep it as a normal business? Until something better comes along. So we are open to everything, but we keep to the plan.